What's up guys? We have another projector in for review. This guy is the BenQ TK850i. Now before we get into this review, if you are new to the channel, you like home theater, hi-fi, new movies, be sure to hit that subscribe button for new weekly videos. All right, so let's get this thing unboxed. I believe that there is a standard version of this, which is the TK850 minus the I. This version will have smart features, which come in the way of this handy dandy smart stick, which has Android TV built into it. So this is where, where all your smart features are gonna come from. And it does support 4K Ultra HD. Inside the package, we get the power cord, the quick start guide, two batteries, two pairs of batteries. We need two pairs of batteries because there are two separate remotes. First remote is for the projector itself. Second remote is for the smart features, for the smart stick. And here is the projector itself. Let's take a look up front here. So here we've got a removable lens cap, IR sensor up front. Up top, we've got behind the sliding door. The first ring here is gonna be your focus. Second one is gonna be your zoom. Obviously this is all manual. And if we take a look at this little ring, this does have lens shift. So you can shift the lens up and down. On the other side here, we have the power button, the directional keypad, back button, menu, and the source selection. For connections, we've got a 12 volt trigger, RS-232, service port, USB 3.0, HDMI 1 with HDCP 2.2, another HDMI 2, second HDMI 2, USB, optical output, and a 3.5 millimeter output jack. There are two speakers built in here as well. And here is the power input. On the bottom, there are adjustable feet. So if you want to put this on a tabletop, you can adjust it. There's two in the back, one in the front. And if you want to mount it with a ceiling mount, there are provisions for that as well. So this is a 3000 lumen projector. Again, it does have Android TV built into it. It is a 4K projector, so you will get 8.3 million pixels, but it does use TI's 0.47 chip. So this is a pixel shifting projector. It's not a native 4K projector, but still you will get 8.3 million pixels. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed in the home theater. We'll come back, give you some thoughts and impressions. So before we get the smart stick installed, you will need a tiny screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver or a flat head. Just stick it in this hole here and remove these two screws. There's another screw on the opposite side. Once you get it loosened up, the screws are not gonna come out. Push up on it and then remove the top. From here, we're gonna take the micro USB, plug it into the side of the stick right there, just like so. And then there should be an HDMI right in the bottom there. Stick that right in. And then put everything back together. All right, let's check out some of the menu options. So this is an HDR10 source we're watching, hence the HDR10. But for sliders, we've got brightness, contrast, color, tint, and sharpness. Now let's take a look at the advanced settings. Since we're watching HDR material, let's check out the HDR brightness settings. Cutting the HDR down to negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. As you can see, as we go up the scale, the image does become lighter and brighter, but you do start blowing out some of the highlights and the shadow details become light gray as opposed to dark and contrasty. So if you really want to get some nice contrast and pop, you can drop this down all the way to negative two, but I'm just going to keep it here at the default. Now let's try this on a darker scene. At negative two, you can still kind of see Nala in the center of the screen. As we go up, it gets easier to bring up shadow detail, but the brighter parts start getting too hot and you'll start overemphasizing a lot of the compression in the source. Now on a brighter shot, 
At the default, it looks to be on the verge of being too hot. At negative two, the clouds are a lot easier to see in the background, and Simba has a lot more texture in his fur. The ground also has good contrast. At negative one, things get a notch brighter, and Simba's fur starts losing some texture. Now this is back at zero. At plus one, the clouds are on the verge of disappearing, and the ground is even more washed out. And at plus two, pretty much everything is all white, albeit it's really bright. This is supposed to be rated for 3000 lumens, and it looks like it's all right here. Under color temperature, there's native lamp, warm, normal, cool, and then back to native lamp. And you can also adjust the gain from here. Here's the color management system, which you can adjust if you have the proper measurement tools. Under Cinema Master, we've got Color Enhancer. At max, it gets really saturated, but it's too saturated for my taste, so let's go back to the default and select zero. Flesh Tone makes the image a bit more yellow overall. Pixel Enhancer, you can see that it just really over sharpens the image. So I like to keep it at zero, but you can change this depending on your own preference. For Motion Enhancer, this will give you the smooth soap opera effect. You might not be able to tell in the video, but we'll try it off on low, middle, and high. Now for dynamic iris, you should be able to see when the iris opens up when the window is on screen, and it'll darken when it's on Sophia's face since the overall shot is dimmer. I kept it on high so it's easier to see with the camera. For brilliant color, as you move the slider up, it'll make the image very bright. This can be useful if you're watching this with the lights on, but it will start to look overblown. You'll see this on brighter material. If it's up too high, it can make certain things unwatchable, so you'll have to tinker with this and find out what works best for you. I personally find at one, and sometimes maybe two, it's subtle enough to give the image some extra pop. For light mode, we've got normal. This is going to be the brightest mode, which will give you 4000 hours of lamp life. Eco is basically low lamp and will give you up to 10,000 hours of lamp life, but the image will be slightly dimmer. And then Smart Eco will dynamically ramp up the light output depending on how bright or dim the image is. So it'll fluctuate between normal and eco depending on the brightness of the picture. It's kind of like Dynamic Iris, but I feel that it doesn't work quite as well. When it's working, you'll hear the fan get louder, then get quieter if you're watching something dark. On Smart Eco, you're supposed to get up to 15,000 hours of lamp life. Now, if you're using Smart Eco, it won't let you use the dynamic iris setting. Normal is going to give you the brightest image, but I personally like to keep it on Eco mode so I can keep the fan noise down. On Normal, the fan can be noticeably loud. And here you can reset all the current picture modes. Under display, we've got some overscan adjustments. Now this also supports 3D, but I didn't have compatible 3D glasses to try out. So if you are a 3D fan, this could be a good projector for you since it doesn't cost too much. For projector position, we've got front, front ceiling, rear, rear ceiling, and back to front. Auto keystone, which can be turned on and off. And here's the test pattern. So this does have lens shift. Right now we're centered right on my screen. Here we can go all the way down, and then we can go all the way up. There's not much in the way of shift, but it is nice that you do get a little bit of play. Here we've got a few aspect ratio settings. Auto, 4x3, then 16x9. 
12 volt trigger, and high altitude mode, which will turn up the fan. Under basic settings, it's all self-explanatory stuff, so I'm just going to speed through all of this. For sound options, let's give it a listen. We have to fight, Nala. Scar is the king. But you are our queen. We should leave before it's too late. We must all stay together and protect the Pride Lands. This is our home. We must never abandon it. This isn't the home I remember. Our time. Come, Nala. Be patient. Sarabi. The king wishes to see you. Don't go. Under advanced, you can reset the lamp or check the lamp timer. Here is a few HDMI format settings. HDMI equalizer. 4 HDMI EDID, you'll want to keep this on enhanced if you want to get 4K HDR to work properly. Electronics control is CEC control and audio return channel is only on HDMI 1. You might want to keep this on if you're using the smart features into a receiver or processor. And here are some power options. Now under information, this will give you your source info, picture mode, resolution, color system, color gamut, 3D format, and firmware version. Now if you're watching SDR content, the picture mode options will be available. They're not available if you're watching HDR. You can either use the presets, or you can use custom and make your own changes. Another thing you can change while watching HDR material is the gamma settings. Next, let's take a quick look at what apps support 4K HDR. Amazon Prime says UHD and HDR is supported, but a quick check under the info says it's only in 4K and in picture mode, it doesn't say HDR10. So it would seem that the Amazon app is 4K only. Disney Plus is only in HD, so no 4K support here. The YouTube app says 4K, but no HDR. If we check the info screen, it says 4K, and it also says HDR10. So it looks like both are working in the YouTube app. The Voodoo app does not support 4K, and at the time of this video, there is no Netflix app to be found, so you'll have to use another device to get your Netflix and chill going. All right, so the BenQ TK850i. This is a very well-priced projector for a lot of people, I must say. It's also super bright, so it's one of those TV replacements for a lot of people because it gives them that big picture and it gives them that quality. And the HDR too, which is really nice. But as a gamer, if I'm trying to play Rocket League or if I'm trying to play any other competitive game, it's not gonna cut it. There's no game mode. It's way too slow in all of its modes, including sports. There's no way I can see anybody doing well by practicing on this. You always have to adjust to the lag. That's not good. So this monitor or this uh, this projector has 4K60 support with the HDR, but obviously the more bells and wishes you have, the worse the input lag is going to be. It's always like that. The more processing you're allowing the display technology, the display device to do, the more input lag you're going to have. Although the picture is very bright, we had to turn off HDR in order to make the input lag, you know. The response time bearable because without or without with HDR on it was just way way too slow even slower than it is now and it's pretty bad now so I wouldn't recommend it for gaming at the time of this video the TK 850i is priced at 1599 as we just mentioned you're probably not gonna want this projector for some serious gameplay if you're a casual gamer this may work out for you I think this projector is more aimed at someone that wants to get into that larger than television experience and go for a more 4K theatrical feel. I will say if you've got some eagle eyes, you may be able to make out some pixel structure from about 6 feet away. 
Further back, the image is nice and crisp. Color-wise, it is specced at 98% Rec. 709, so you will get some nice saturation. HDR was very bright, but you will have to find a good setting for HDR brightness, as this doesn't have the best HDR tone mapping. But for its price, I think it's a livable trade-off for not having the best highlight or shadow detail. If you're a real stickler for image quality, you can always move up to their Pro Series, which will get you P3 coverage for better color accuracy and HDR. Still, this is a solid entry point into big screen 4K projection, and it has smart features on board as well. Setup is fairly easy, and the lens shift is a nice bonus at this price point. I think if you're looking to get the biggest, sharpest picture possible without having to sell your car, the BenQ TK850i might be the solution you're looking for. So what are your thoughts on BenQ projectors? Have you used one and what do you think of the picture quality? Leave a comment and let us know. Now if you want to grab this projector, I will leave some links for it down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.